one, one through eight. Now I am not a great singer, but I will tell you that that hit me like a ton of bricks because it was three years as of uh, the eleventh of January that I was ordained and uh, did my first sermon of coming out of the wilderness. It's kind of fitting. And it's the first time I sung a hymn, but it just, I felt that I needed to express my praise to you, God, for keeping me. God has kept me three years in the, in the faith, in the ministry. Times I've given up, times that friends have turned their backs on me, times that uh, I've not had very much spiritual support, and even without it, I've always had him. He's always kept me. It, it brings me to the passage of John 10. It makes so much more sense. Because as we go through our Christian life, you can go through here and there. You'll lose friends, gain friends, gain allies, lose allies, make enemies, enemies turn into friends. I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you the roller coaster of the ins and outs of Christians that come in and out of life at different stages. And I hear a lot about, well, we all grow at different rates and this, that, and the third. And, you know, I, I once believed that. I once truly believed we grow at different rates. But the truth is, we don't grow at different rates. It's how much we love and pursue God. And in that pursuit of God determines our maturity, our spiritual growth. The pursuit of of God, the pursuit of righteousness, the pursuit of the peace that is within him. There's no way you can stay stunted in your growth unless you are willingly not pursuing righteousness. If you're not doing the very foundations of the things that he commanded us to do. How can you grow spiritually if you're not in prayer? How can you grow spiritually if you're not in your word of God how can you grow spiritually if you are not in true praise and true worship? How can you? How can anyone grow on their own with just this experiential Christian feeling with nothing added in? A good evidence of the fact that you can't grow your faith we're going to discuss. But let's take a look at John 10, what I mean by when it means that it made, it made me understand of how God can keep you as you stay close to him. And it really has, I mean, three years after all the statistics that I hear about what happens to preachers and, and whether they stay in the ministry or they leave the ministry or they turn to alcoholism or whatnot, you know, this, that, and the third, maybe they fall into temptation, you know, and it happens because there's a lot of pressure in preaching. Trust me, there's a lot more critiques and critics and naysayers than there are encouragers. And that is even within the body of Christ. Yes, you, you heard me say that. Even in the body of Christ, there are few, very few encouragers. Because there's very few who have a passion for God, that, but the, and, and some that do, that think they have the passion for God, is only from self-works. They believe by their own religious, their religious actions, they believe they have a relationship with God, but they're not directed by God to go encourage others. There's a reason for that. If you can't be used by God, that means you're not ready yet. The fruit is not being born. You're not bearing anything yet. Not saying you can and you won't. But where is your spiritual growth? Where is your abandon of yourself to deny yourself and to go after God and to learn about who he is, his character? To learn who Jesus is and learn what, what Jesus did. To go back to March 3rd of 2012, I just have to, just have to grasp the idea of what happened. And let's really talk about salvation. Let's talk about regeneration. Let's talk about, and I'm not straying from John 10, we'll go to it, but let's just talk about what happens. Do you know that nothing we did contributed to our salvation? There's no condition that we met. There's no effort on our own part. It was all done by the purpose of God. By the purpose of God. Nothing that we did swayed him to choose us. It was only by his sovereign grace are we saved. Let me give you a graphic illustration. Jesus Christ reached, and I'll use me as a great example, because I'm, I'm, I'm the one preaching here so about it, so just forgive me, but it happened to you as well. 
Jesus reached into my grave, pulled up my dead Lazarus corpse and spoke to me and gave me the ability to answer the call of salvation by giving me the ability to repent. Now you just think about that, digging through the mounds and mounds of secular dirt and sin that is covered all throughout my body. I was buried in a tomb. I was buried in a tomb of my own sins and Christ deep put his hands deep within the earth to pull me out. And I was dead, could not answer him unless... He called and gave me the ability to answer him, much like Lazarus. When you are dead, you can't hear anything. There's no access to nothing. God has to give you the ability to hear the call of repentance, which means he has to give life back into that corpse. My God, we live because of Jesus. And he will keep us. And he will make sure that nothing will snatch us out of his hand. Go to John 10, 28. My she- oh, it's 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they, follow- and they follow me. And I give to them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. That goes into verse 30. And that, and that, that goes to, to the celebration, I guess, to, to, to understand that three years of preaching and ministry and, and building the church and watching people fall away and come in and w- like, like, like go in and out like, a, like, like wind. They hear something they like and then they don't hear something that they like. I'm not the preacher that they, that they expected because I'm not saying all the Osteenian things of, of, of super encouragement. I'm not sitting up there telling them things that are that, that just encourages their feel-good mechanism, but I'm not encouraging their mechanism that will convict and change their hearts because they have to want to grow in their faith. And I had to learn a very valuable lesson. Not everybody wants to grow in their faith. Some are still so entrapped into the world that they can't turn away. Some are still entrapped into their own idea of self, self works. Their own idea that they can fix their problems. Their own idea that they can pull themselves out of a problem. What I've learned in three years is that I would never have made it unless God has kept me. By his very strength, God has kept me. God has kept me. I don't, I don't know any other way. To say that, he's kept me. And I wanted to turn away from ministry. I I wish I could tell you that I got into ministry and it was just this fabulous thing of where I went in and headlong and and I was just going through, you know, just celebrating like anything else. But it has been an arduous battle and a test against my faith to see if I will turn away from God. More attacks on the devil than I could ever imagine. Attacks from Christians, so-called Christians, my own brothers and sisters who have yet to come out of the struggle of, of the flesh. Not saying I've arrived, but I combat it. I beat on my body daily. All I know is to go to the Word of God. All I know is to go to God and say, please help me. How can you grow if you don't spend no time with God? How can you grow if you don't spend any time with God? What are you expecting? It to be given to you by osmosis? I mean, there's got to be some reason that people can't understand why they're not growing. Second Timothy, Second Thessalonians. I'm sorry, my brothers and sisters. Second Thessalonians, chapter three, verse three. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. I, I see that. I can see that every day now. It's becoming more and more evident. More and more evident. That through these three years, up until this day, that everything that happens for me, everything that I do, it is because the, is because the God in heaven has taken mercy on me and kept me from evil. 
When I was tempted, he kept me. When I wanted to walk away from the ministry, he kept me. When I wanted to be angry with, with how things were turning out in the church, he kept me. When I had people turning away from me in the church, he kept me. When I had friends turning away from me that I've known for 20 years, he's kept me in the faith. When I've had arguments uh, with, with close relatives, he's kept me in the faith. I never turned away from this word. I never, ever let my fervor die out because I've understood something on March 3rd of 2012. I can't live without Jesus. I can't live a second, a minute. I can't live anything outside of it. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. And my brothers and sisters, my beloved, if you're hearing this message, how can you? How can you walk in your day and not pick up your Bible to spend time with God, to get that peace that he promised you? The peace within him. Is he not your peace? In three years, let me tell you, I've met many, many oh, still have some Christian friends. In three years, I've known them. In three years, they've made the same profession of faith as I have. And I know better than them, but they are the same people I met three years ago. Their worship habits, habits haven't changed. Their spiritual growth hasn't changed. Their manner of speak hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. They have bloomed leaves, but with no fruit to show. And whose fault is it? God's not going to force himself on you. But you got to wonder, are you in the faith? Brothers and sisters, are you in the faith? Examine yourself. Are you in the the faith. Somebody told me, oh, you don't question someone's salvation. Why not? Don't you want to know? Don't you want to understand that you've got a grasp of who you are? How can you walk around and just think that everything's okay when the Holy Spirit is sitting in there saying, hey, you ain't spent no time in the Bible in weeks, months. You're still going out to the club drinking. You're still dressing like you like a harlot. You still, you still have a manner and a speech that sounds just like a non-believer. If I line, if you lined up next to a non-believer and, and, and next to yourself, and I'm speaking to those who have not grown, and if, there, if you can't see, if an outside person can't see a difference between you two, you've not grown. Why? Did Jesus not do enough for pulling you from the grave? Did it not mean anything? How can you allow this to go another day? Of just liking Christian posts but not putting no effort into your Christian growth. Second Corinthians chapter 13. If I sound frustrated, I am because I, I'm tired of being alone in this growth process. And everyone looking at me like, oh, we just grow at different rates. No, we love God differently. Some of us abandon everything that we know and chase after him because that's all that we have that gives us joy. And that we ain't ashamed of that. Anybody listening to this broadcast, raise your hand if you are not ashamed that God has given your peace. I'm raising my hand right now because I know God gives me peace. Why would I ever chase after anything else? Why would I try to go after anything else? When it doesn't give me the same peace God does. Not even close, not even remotely close. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate, unapproved, disqualified. We got to examine ourselves. If nothing has changed in your life since you were saved, and I'm not talking about minor changes. I'm talking about major changes. If you haven't even seen a 180 of where your life has been, if your manner of talk is still the same, if you still carry yourself as the same person you were before, that it has not taken hold. Let today be a day where you surrender to God, that you learn how to chase after him. Learn quit looking back into this world that has nothing to offer you besides pain and destruction. When are you going to learn to grow up? It is time to grow up. 
up. You can't look like the world. You've been set apart. I learned that in three years. I can tell you three years of loneliness. Why? Because I don't share the same things in common with those that are not chasing after Christ. I just don't. And in that loneliness, there is still a comfort that I cannot describe except if you just believe and love in Jesus. If you love and believe in Jesus, he gives you that peace. He gives you that peace. What's so hard about that? He gives you that peace, but you don't take it. You're still playing games. You're still playing, playing, playing games of Christianity. You're still putting on the jersey. You're still buying all the cool stuff at the Christian bookstore. All the Bibles in the world in your house ain't changing anything. You can read a psalm every day if you felt like it, but, you, but nothing about you is still different. Should people know when you spend time with God? People know when you spend time with the Master. You can't hide it. People will see your light. They will know you're a Christian. They will know you attend church. They will know you read your Bible. They will know of the hope that lives within you. But they won't if he is not living in you. If Christ is not abiding in you, they're not going to see anything. They're going to see nothing but the world, which means they're looking at themselves, looking at mirrors, looking at mirrors. Looking at mirrors. When are you going to grow up? When is enough enough? When are you going to look at yourself in the mirror and realize, man, I'm the same person I was two or three years ago. Three years and nothing has changed. Minute changes. And most of those changes may be just self changes that you think that you did, but they really wasn't what God did for you. Did you let him transform your life? Did you let him do the things that separates you from that which was killing you in the first place. Or has killed you in the first place. Same association, same friendship, them same tired friends that hasn't done nothing for you, hasn't led you to God, hasn't kept you to God, hasn't kept you in the faith, hasn't got you away from temptation. Still with them. Them same people that break promises day after day that are not even interested in keeping their word to you. Still friends in your life. Those that say they love you to death and you ain't seen them in months. They're Christians. They say they're Christians. They claim that Christianity has no fellowship with you, have no fellowship with the church. Ain't seen it inside of a church. You still hanging on to them? They still there? Do you look like them? I don't mean to be rough, but there's got to be something different in your life. There's got to be evidence that you have spent time with God. Some kind of evidence. Some kind of evidence. I'm going to close out. I'm going to read Romans 12, 9. It's a huge. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Don't be selfish. Look at that. Honor others above yourselves. Have you done that? In two years, one year, six months, 24 hours ago? Is it consistent? Verse 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Has that happened? Have you kept your spiritual fervor? Have you kept yourself close to God? Have you kept yourself in the faith? Have you kept yourself to, in, in, a, in a position to where you understand what's happening? That you'll never give up that faith and that love that when you got baptized and you swore yourself and promised yourself to God, did you do that? Are you a man of your word now? Are you a, king, a, a queen of your word now? Are you a woman of your word now? Do you keep your word? Do you keep fellowship? Do you practice hospitality? Do you practice to see your brothers and sisters? Do you exhort them and encourage them and, and correct them when necessary? Hard to do those things. If you're not in the faith, if you have not abandoned and denied yourself this, your life that you died 
Didn't Christ die for you? If you don't give up this life, you will be forever stunted spiritually. You'll never grow. You'll never get past the walls. You'll never get past the things that are holding you back, which is yourself, your selfishness. You haven't denied yourself yet. If you're still not grown any further, if you're no further equipped four days ago now to help someone that's in need, you only have to look at yourself. Am I in the faith? Am I doing what God has commanded me to do? Am I studying to show thyself approved? Am I never letting the words of the law leave thy mouth? You got to ask yourself these questions. Am I in the faith? I want to thank all of y'all who have stuck by me for three years. Three years that have been there when I was in tears, be there when I was in pain, be there with me when I was at my worst and lowest points. I want to thank every one of you. Because you didn't have to, but you stood by me. I want to thank you for all those who stood in the gap for me that, that, that around, around the globe. People I haven't even met physically, but they have stood in the gap and, and emailed and called and made sure I was all right. Those that have never walked away from my side, I thank you for holding me and standing in the gap for me. Because you had fruit to give and I was able to take it and continue on. God has kept you much as he has kept me. I love you so much. This is from my heart, beloved. In Jesus' name, amen.